Monday. It is another weekly reading vlog. I have got some book mail on my lap, which is very exciting. I hope you guys are having a fantastic time watching this reading vlog. I hope you're gonna enjoy it. We're only like 30 seconds in, but you know, I hope you're here for a good time. That makes it sound weird. Anyway, nothing amazingly special planned this week. No challenges this week, because I just wanted a break of just chilling with my reading. I am still reading Saw Kill Girls, which I was reading at the start of the, or the end of the last weekly reading vlog. Not got too much left, so I might finish that tonight. I might finish it tomorrow. I'm okay with it. It's not really blowing my mind. It's still not wowing me. It's not creeping me out too much either. It's a horror, it's a YA horror, and it's all right, it's fine. I don't know what I'm gonna read after this though. Oh, maybe, maybe what's in this package. So I've got some book mail. I'm gonna go and open it. Well, I'm gonna open it here. And then we'll chat about the week ahead, I guess. So book mail, book mail, book mail, book mail, books came in the mail, hey. I'm pretty sure I know what both of these are, but let's open them first. I also did some book buying late last night for some hard covers of some books that I really like. So I'll tell you what they are if they arrive this week, hopefully, because I'm very excited about it. Okay, this is kind of stuck. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this one is The Absolute Book by Elizabeth Knox. I saw this recommended by Immy from Mythical Reader. So I'm really hoping I like it. I can't really remember what it's about, but I've just seen that Lainey Taylor has blurbed it as mind-blowing. I can't remember anything that it's about. We'll just read the blurb. Taryn Cornick can barely remember the library in her old family home. Since her sister was murdered, she's forgotten so much. Okay, we're doing it's murder, books about books. I remember that. Now it's all coming back. The fire, the thief, the scroll box. People are asking questions about the library. Questions that might relate to her sister's death. A book in which secrets are written and which everyone believes only she can find. They insist Taryn be the hunter, but she knows the truth. She is the hunted. It's a tale of sisters, ancient blood, a forgotten library, murder, revenge, a book that might have just about the answers for everything. I'm very excited about that. Okay, that looks right on my street. So that's The Absolute Book by Elizabeth Knox. I'm very excited, yay, okay. All right, and then this one, I think, I know what this is, maybe. Yes, okay, so this is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. Crystal Sutherland wrote Our Chemical Hearts, which I read ages ago, ages ago, and enjoyed. This is actually a book I'm gonna be working on an ad with on Instagram for their Instagram tour and my coffee has arrived today, but I think this is kind of horror-esque. Again, I feel like it's gonna be easier if I just read you a summary for the blurb. Dark, dangerous things are happening around the Hollow Sisters. Ever since the disappeared as children, only to reappear a month later with no memory of what happened to them, odd eerie occurrences follow in their wake. When Grey the eldest goes missing again, Iris and Vivi are left to figure out the mystery, but they aren't the only ones looking for her. As they brush against the supernatural, Iris realizes that the world they return to 10 years, the world that they return, the why can't I speak? The world that returned them 10 years ago might be calling them back. Just how much horror lies beneath the surface. I'm excited. I think this is kind of folklore as well. That cover is very interesting. There's lots of stuff going on there. So I am working on the promotion for this on my Instagram and I think that's next month at the start of April. So I want to read this one hopefully in the next week or so. It's not very long, so that should be quite easy to get through. Um, but then I can kind of craft my photo idea. So. Got some books in the mail. So there's nothing crazily exciting happening for the rest of the week. I'm gonna be upping my exercise intake at the moment because my friend is getting married in August and I have, I'm have i her maid of honor and I have to have my dress fitted in May. And I didn't really think about this, but um, I, I need to be a certain size to fit into the dress because the dress has already been bought and the dress was bought before lockdown. And I put a little bit of weight over lockdown so I need to be able to fit into that dress. But also I just wanna get a bit stronger and a bit healthier and just feel like I am physically fitter. So. I'm gonna be doing more exercise to contribute towards that. I started with daily yoga with Adrienne. I've been doing that for a few days. My legs are achy, uh, but it's fun, it's fun. It feels nice to kind of open myself up in that way. So that's the week ahead. Hopefully gonna be reading. In fact, both of these books are ones that I really wanna pick up pretty soon. So maybe you'll see me reading these in this vlog. There is another book with awards that I got last week that I really wanna to read too. Basically, I just wanna finish Saw Kill Girls. <laughs> maybe I'll sit down and really dedicate time to finishing that after work because I just kind of want it to end. Hello, tis after work on oh, Monday. It's kind of sunny, but look, sunbeams. So I'm gonna go for a walk. I don't think it's gonna rain. I think we should be good. Might be deceivingly sunny and not as warm as I think though. I'm gonna go for a walk, walk into town, walk back up through town, like not into town, but like walk around the area that's by town, walk through town, walk back here. You don't get my route. I'm gonna go for a walk. <laughs> Whilst I listen to the audiobook for this book, which is on script, I've got like two hours left and I'm just, I'm listening to it now because I'm not enjoying this. I'm not, I just don't like it. 
I don't think it's gripping or compelling and it tells you everything pretty much that's going to happen. It spells it out for you too much and I don't like that about it and I think it's predictable in terms of the character dynamics and eh, meh. But I feel like I'm so close to the end that I don't want to DNF it because I might as well finish <laughs> I invested time into it enough that I want to just get it done so hopefully I can then start another book when I come home. I don't know what I'm doing for dinner tonight but I kind of want to watch Cherry which is the new Tom Holland film on Apple. Apple Plus? Apple? Stream? Apple TV? What's it called? The Apple streaming service is there. Um, I'm having a bit of a thing for Tom Holland at the moment after I watched um, The Last Spider-Man again last week. I just He's such a good actor. I think he's going to be one of the remembered actors of our time. I think he's such a good actor and I think also he's never English in any of his films. It's always he's always got the American accent so I feel like people don't know he's English as well but I feel like he's going to be remembered as one of our good ones. So anyway I want to watch Cherry but for now I'm gonna go for a walk and maybe catch up with you later with my further thoughts on this book. I thought it was a three star and I think it's a two star. I mean which is kind of good in a way because I never rate that low so it does prove I do have the capacity to range my ratings, I just don't tend to continue with books. I literally cut myself off in the middle of saying that. <laughs> I pressed the record button. I was saying I do have the capacity to range the ratings of my books, I just don't tend to continue books I'm not liking. I return from my walking adventures. I've got 58 exercise points today. Yes, done two workouts, feel, I actually feel really hungry. I suddenly had a moment when I was uh, walking via town and I was like, oh, I feel really wobbly, really wobbly, because I've moved more than I would normally and haven't eaten the proper foods to be able to sustain, sustain my body. So that was a fun time. <laughs> but I've got the oven on now and then I'm going to make some dinner. I don't know what it's going to be yet. It's going to be a, a concoction of what is in my fridge. Anyway, I finished this book. Finally, <laughs> came out as two stars. I realised the big reason I had a disconnect with this book. And I don't know why I didn't say this sooner because I felt like I knew this the whole way through. I just didn't really associate it with why I wasn't enjoying it as much. It was just an observation. But there is a lot of strange stuff happening in this book. It's all set on an island in which girls go missing and at the period of time we're in the book the girls are going missing much closer together and it's pretty traumatic. There's some pretty traumatic events. None of the characters seem to react like this is actual trauma happening. They all seem very blasé about it. All of them. Very casual. Very much like, oh, it's just this just kind of happens. I, I it, it, Too much so that it was almost just unbelievable. And I never really know where to draw a line with that kind of thing because obviously we're talking about a horror fantasy type of book in which of course things are going to be unbelievable because it's a horror fantasy but I still feel like their reactions for the situation they were put in just didn't make me feel like they were well-written characters personally but I feel like their reactions for the situations they were put in made me feel like there wasn't as much depth to their characters and I didn't feel like I was getting as much from them as I wanted to and I think that meant I didn't connect with the characters and therefore the whole thing felt a little bit lacklustre for me. I think that is my conclusion. So two stars. I don't know what I'm going to read next but I know it's going to be out of the three newest books I've acquired so I'm going to go and like look at the first pages of them all and pick. I'm very excited because I'm really really excited to read all of them and they're also all a little bit different from each other so they all offer something different for me to see what I fancy. I think there's two I'm picking between because one of them is a horror and given that I've just finished a horror I don't want to go back into the same genre in case I blur them together by accident so I'm gonna go make some food now because I'm hungry and then I think I'm gonna watch Cherry as I said I think I'm gonna watch Cherry I don't know but that might be the plan. Hey it's Tuesday I feel like I look really red in the face do I? A little bit maybe I don't know I've been sat under my blanket every time I pick up my camera I've been sat under my blanket and I suddenly got like ridiculously hot and the sun's on me and now I'm just like, ah. Uh. Anyway, hey, Tuesday, I picked my book, The Absolute Book, which is by Elizabeth Knox. This arrived yesterday in the post. You would have seen me with my books came in the mail. Shh. 
anyway, so this is the book that I have picked to read for the week. I've also realised that obviously this weekend is Becca's Bookopoly and I am taking part in, or book, Bookopolathon, Bookopolathon, and I'm taking part in one of the live sprints on my channel on Sunday. So I'm now thinking, oh, should I have picked a smaller book because I want to be able to start a book on Saturday for the Bookopolathon. And now I'm like, ah, so I'm gonna try and read as much of this as I can. And then maybe put a pen in it, put a pin in it, not a pen, or a bookmark, put a bookmark in it over the weekend and read something shorter, slash a couple of shorter things for the readathon and then come back to it on Monday. But I am doing sprints on Sunday for the readathon, which is exciting, Sunday morning. And I am going to maybe be doing a separate vlog for it. Maybe, I'm not sure. Maybe, things might happen. But hi, welcome to Tuesday. Hi. Wednesday, Wednesday. Amazing. Halfway through the week, work is done. It's still really sunny, like really sunny. I've got some very exciting things happening in my inbox. Feeling good, feeling good. I've also done a thing today slash yesterday. I was looking at my Patreon packages and the tiers and what was involved in each tier. So what I've done is had a little bit of a play about with the tiers that's allowed me to reduce the cost of the tiers and change some of the things or like add things that are being offered. So I've done that which means that you can now join my Patreon for cheaper, if you would like to. It's a lovely little family. We have discords, we have book clubs, there's behind the scenes stuff, there's pos positivity podcast type of things. It's all linked down below, but I am really, really excited about it. I'm, I feel good about the changes that I've made because I was kind of thinking about it for a while, thinking what the best way to do it to reflect it to be the way I wanted it to be. And yeah, I'm quite pleased with it, so. Hopefully this is something positive that you guys will enjoy too. I'm always going to be adding more stuff in and making a place positivity. I think that is the overwhelming thing from it. It's just such a nice positive place. It's really helping me get through the weeks at the moment as we're still in lockdown in the uh, in, in England, in the UK, both in England and in the UK. But anyway, reading update because I think I only vaguely gave you a very small update yesterday and then I didn't refilm anything else because yesterday I felt so bad, like body-wise. I did a Joe Wicks workout in the morning and I mean, you're meant to feel like energized after a workout is, is what Joe Wicks was telling me. And I both hated and loved Joe Wicks because I don't know how he was doing it, but he was also really motivational. And I just felt really, really unwell almost the rest of the day. I ate well, I ate properly. I just didn't really feel up to doing much. So I was meant to do a food trip yesterday. So I actually just ended up sitting on the sofa, working from the sofa and just watching stuff on TV in the evening. So that was, that was good. I did another workout, another Joe Weeks this morning and I feel way better. So I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was just a, an off day, but I feel much better this morning and better this afternoon. So that's good. Feel more awake, feel more ready to read because I was trying to read last night and I just couldn't concentrate on the book, which, I think this book needs concentration from what I'm picking up so far. It's not a light read. I also don't really know what this is about properly yet. So far we've met a woman, well, a girl that's become a woman. We've seen her over quite a few years of her life, but there's no indication as to the time having passed until someone references something as to how long ago it was that you've already seen in the book. So I think we've gone like 20 to 30 years through her life in about three chapters, but with no indication of that. So. It's kind of a little bit confusing in terms of timelines, but I know that's obviously been done for a reason. I am really liking the writing style. We're being put into situations that I can really visualize and that feel very cozy and very, not, it, it's not fantasy immersive, but like immersive in the sense of, it does feel like it's lifting you away from reality, despite the fact that at the moment there is an early flickers of fantasy. I don't, know if it's going to be a fantasy. I, there's talking crows so that kind of makes me think that it's a fantasy but I haven't seen much aspect of that yet so I'm intrigued to keep going with it. It's not something that's completely blowing me away yet. I very nearly put it down yesterday because it was too much for what I wanted to read at that moment but I do really want to read it so I am going to keep going. What I might do is get the audiobook for this when it comes out, which I believe it comes out on Thursday or Friday this week. I don't know why the audiobook's not out yet because the book is. So this is what I'm reading. I'm going to do a food shop, although I kind of want to go for a walk because it's really sunny, but also like I have smashed my exercise rings already today. So maybe I should listen to my body, which is a bit achy and just rest for a little bit. But I do need to do a food shop. So I'm going to go and do that after work, maybe. 
around. Oh no, see rush hour, is rush hour a thing now? I'm so used to, has anyone else got this? I'm so used to rush hour not being a thing anymore, but now people are slowly going back into offices. I feel like rush hour is returning. So, mm. anyway, I may update you later. I may not. I'm gonna be watching The Circle tonight. That's digested, I didn't watch it because I was too tired. I just put David Attenborough documentaries on and closed my eyes last night. So yeah, I'm gonna watch The Circle tonight as well. Many exciting things. Guys, this just took me far too long to make, so can we please just take a moment to appreciate it? It's very simple, it's turkey meatballs, it's pasta and stuff, but I just, it took me way longer to make than I wanted to. It is 7.40, I've done a full food shop and I am starving, so get in my belly. Hi, hello. Why do I keep pointing at you whenever I say hello? I think I've done this every day this week. Anyway, it's Thursday, yay! This week's gone really fast, which is good. Most weeks are going pretty fast at the moment. I tend to find, if I'm in a good place mentally, which thankfully I am more and more at the moment, then the weeks go really fast. So, yay. So today, exciting plans. Working, working, working. I might walk to Waitrose in my lunch break because I forgot to buy the main ingredient for the dinner I was meant to have last night, so I had to cook something different. And I don't know what I forgot, so I'm gonna have to go and get that today. And something else that I forgot. But I can't remember what I forgot. Oh no, what was it? It's a shame I didn't write that down. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. And then after work, I am going on a walk. Now I really wanted to go around. So there's the golf course by me. And the golf course is obviously, it's an 18 hole golf course and the nine holes are at the bottom, like, which is a really easy walk for me. And it's very open and public. And then the other nine holes are up, like above the motorway or above a bypass, not the motorway and through like a foresty area and then there's the other nine holes. It's really pretty. I went for a walk near it the other day and thought I wanted to go around that area but I feel like it's easier at the moment for me with what everything like work-wise I've got going on to do it after work because at the weekend this weekend I'm pretty busy and have updates about that as well. Anyway point being I wanted to go after work but obviously that's at night time nearly. It's in the evening and it's quite a long walk. I think it's a couple of hours so I would probably be out as it starts to get dark. And as you will have seen from a lot of stuff that's been happening in the news recently, women do not feel safe walking alone at night. And this is not a new thing. This is not a new thing. This is something we've always had the issue of. And I feel like it's almost comical that I can be like, well, that's okay. I've got a man to walk with me. It's like, that's hilarious, isn't it? It's just, I mean, and I say hilarious in a very ironic sense. Obviously it's not funny at all. It's absolutely hideous. The fact that I am only doing this walk because I have got a male friend with me who I feel very safe with. Yeah, I don't understand why this is the world we live in. But I know that I spoke about this on my blog last week, but I just find it highly annoying that the fact that to do this walk after work, I could do it on my own. There's nothing stopping me, but I personally wouldn't feel safe being in quite a private area that isn't necessarily in the public eye and I really wanted to do this walk soon because when the golf courses re reopen this will no longer be open to the public. So that's what's happening after work. I'm really looking forward to the walk. Hopefully it doesn't rain because it was a little bit spitty this morning so hopefully that holds off and then we can go for a really nice walk after work which should be really good. I'm glad that we can walk with people. I think it's just one person that we can walk with but I'm glad that we can do that and that'll change as lockdown rules ease. I'm really looking forward to it though, I'm really enjoying walking, walking, getting out every day, doing some form of exercise is really helping my brain and I think generally I would say if you want to get into a more positive mindset doing some form of exercise, no matter what it is, whether it's yoga, whether it's a Joe Wicks workout that I'm torturing myself with every morning at the moment, or whether you're going for a walk or a run, anything like that, as long as you feel comfortable with whatever you're doing and obviously you are safe if it is something that you're doing outside, like if you're running in the evening, please wear reflective gear or run under headlights and things like that, obviously keep yourself safe, you know what's best, but generally I find that it makes me feel a lot more positive doing things like that and makes me smile. Dancing, dancing is a great workout to make me smile. I danced seven minutes of exercise yesterday in between work bits. I just had my headphones on, just kept running about to dance whenever a good song came on, so I very much enjoyed that. But uh, this has turned into positivity tips with Beth, but that is, that's what I'm doing after work. Bookwise, so I've had some thoughts about this book and I made a decision. So I am 100 pages in. This book, when I can get into it, is very entrancing and the writing is very hypnotizing and gripping. However, I am really struggling to get into it properly. I feel like 
sometimes you read a book and you just need to sit and read it for hours to properly get going with the story. I was literally reading it last night thinking, what? What? Because some of the plot just absolutely came out of nowhere and it just felt really like it blindsided you, but not in a good way, like in a what the hell is happening kind of way. However, balancing that with the fact that I feel like it's really entrancing and I'm intrigued, and I can see that it actually references The Shadow of the Wind in this book, which is my favourite book. I can see that it's kind of got flickers of a similar storyline of a mystery around a book, but I just generally, I'm not wanting to pick it up that much. So what I've decided to do, because I do want to read it, is actually get the audiobook for it, which came out today. So I've got the audiobook, I've got six hours left, or just over six hours left in the audiobook. So I'm gonna try and read that by tomorrow night. I don't know if this is going to happen or not, but that leads me on to my plans for the weekend. So I said I was thinking about doing a separate reading vlog, so what I think I'm going to do is end this tomorrow. I feel like this has been a super short reading vlog with not much read, but I feel like that's probably because for me the week's gone really fast, so I haven't had as much time to vlog. But I'm going to end this tomorrow. It's going to be a short one, but I will then do a really, really powerhouse of a vlog on Saturday and Sunday that will then go live on Monday, I guess. So you'll be seeing this one at the weekend. I don't know. I haven't decided my posting schedule. That's what's going to happen. So there'll be two reading vlogs this week, essentially, and hopefully the one at the weekend should be, like, really on point of me reading all this stuff for the bookoplathon, which I still love that word, bookoplathon. Just flows really nicely. Anyway, so that's what's happening. I'm doing a live on Sunday morning at 8am for four hours for the bookoplathon. Um, it's early, it is early, so hopefully I might see some of you guys there, because now I'm going to be posting this before that, hopefully, maybe, I don't know when I'm posting this, but... Hopefully I can see some of you guys there. Should be a good time. There'll be quizzes and things, but if not, then I will have saved it to my YouTube afterwards so you can check it out either way. That's my updates for right now. I'm gonna get back to work and listening to my audiobook, I suppose. What the shit is this book about? What is this book about? I, since speaking to you last, I've basically been scheduling one of our clients' social media calendar this, this morning, this afternoon, is it this morning? It's just gone 12 today and that involves a lot of copy and pasting of what I've already written so I don't have to write anything so it's quite like a mind a thoughtless task I suppose well not thoughtless point being I can listen to audiobooks so I've been listening for like an hour I don't understand what this book is about I feel like I'm not even <laughs> It feels like every page I've, I've picked up a different book in the middle of, like I've just started in the middle of a random book. It feels so lost. Um, Yesterday I said I wasn't sure if it was a fantasy. It is definitely a fantasy. There's like a hidden door to a fairy realm. There's talking ravens or crows, some, a bird that talks. What? And like I am properly paying attention because this task allows me to be able to pay attention to like listening. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Do I DNF it? I don't want to DNF it. How many pages is it? It's just like, I'm all for a weird book, but this one just, I mean, there's weirdness without a plot. And this is what this is. Oh my God, it's nearly 600 pages. Ah, it's over 600 pages. Mm, okay. Right, I don't know what I'm gonna do there. There's six hours and 19 minutes left in the audiobook. So if I <laughs> listen to, three hours of that today mm. and then listen to three hours tomorrow that could work because I take about two to three hours to clean the flat and I will probably do that tomorrow so I could just listen to it the whole time I'm cleaning I'm so confused guys I'm so why does this make no sense why I feel like it's probably starting to look like I just live in this hoodie but honestly it's just comfy and it has a nice fit to it it's from ASOS if anyone cares it's a cropped hoodie that's all I know fashion anyway books reading things okay it's Friday it's the last day of this reading vlog because I'm going to be taking part in Becca's bookoplathon starting at midnight except I will probably be asleep at midnight so starting it whenever I wake up but I have made a decision Ari books I it's very Sounds very dramatic, doesn't it? I have made a decision. It's not a dramatic decision. The absolute book that I was reading yesterday and I wasn't really sure whether I was vibing it or not. I had tried it on audiobook, I tried it on physical book and I just could not follow what was going on. It literally felt like someone was putting different pages from a different book randomly every few pages. It just had no concept of following a plot narrative. And I think that's the directive style of that book. 
and that's fine and I think if I was maybe in a different mindset for it then that would be better like maybe if I was sat out on holiday or something and I was just able to purely read it and not get up and break in the middle but I think because I was not reading it in big chunks it was making it incredibly difficult to follow particularly with the lack of letting us know whether we were going to a flashback whether we were in the present and where we were actually being set as well and I know that that's all part of the point and I do understand that so what I'm doing is DNFing it I'm not putting it down in the sense of I might pick it up again but I'm not going to get rid of it and if one day I'm in a position where I just want to sit outside on a really sunny day and read it then that's what I'm going to do but at the moment I'm just not feeling it but I can see that I really would feel it at another point because I can see the writing's beautiful I can see it was very entrancing it just wasn't something I was following when I was only picking it up for like 30 to 50 pages at a time so that brings me on to the book mail I have just received book mail book mail book mail book mail books came in the mail hey so I ordered these two and I'm super excited that they've arrived in time for the readathon because they fit two of the prompts for the well the point of this is that you never know what the prompts are you can't plan your TBR for the bookopolathon because there, there are roles for the bookopoly board that predict each future well not predict tell you each future prompt so the first two prompts are out which is a fantasy and a book with a dark cover I think this is a fantasy and this is a book with a dark cover. Arguably this is also a book with a dark cover so I could do both but have you seen the size of this? Like I can totally rock this. So okay I'll actually tell you what the books are. So we've got The Lost Apothecary. Uh, oh my god. Apothecary. I was telling Lauren about this book yesterday and I just the amount of times I had to say the word apothecary I just kept stumbling over it. I don't know why but it's called The Last Apothecary by Sarah Penner. I believe this might be a debut novel from her but it seems to be a historical mystery cross with the modern day. There's this apothecary back in the who knows when, the past, uh, the 18th century that basically has some kind of magic element to it I think and does something special. Oh it, uh, okay, the woman who runs it sells well disguised potions to use against the oppressive men in women's lives so I already love that because yes and then something goes wrong and basically we then go to present day where there's a historian who comes across this unsolved mystery where everyone died or something like that within the apothecary's past and she goes about investigating into this. I enjoy a historical mystery because I feel like there's a different kind of intellectual intrigue there because it's something she's researching that nothing is impending on it now as much and it's everything that's already happened and I love that very much and this also isn't too long so I think I'm going to do is start this today because I am now without a book and you can what you could do with there's no real strict rules with this bookopolathon so what you can do is just continue reading the book that you're already reading so I think that makes more sense for me to start this today try and get into a good chunk of it this afternoon evening well it's going to be this evening and then on Saturday morning continue to read it because then the next roll is at 12 and then hopefully what I can do is read this <laughs> before 12 maybe this might be a little bit ambitious this is the Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nevo and this is absolutely miniature so I can definitely read this from what I've seen of this this is a real feminist novel yes it says it's a feminist high fantasy which is very exciting I think this is a little bit political I'm not 100% sure exactly the details of the story because I've just seen a lot of people saying this is really good and the fact that I immediately saw a feminist high fantasy I was like yes okay although interesting high fantasy was such a small book because obviously high fantasy is usually massive amounts of world building so I'm intrigued to see how the setting is placed within this I'm quite excited for that because often I think that high fantasy can be daunting because of that whereas this might be high fantasy more of a bite-sized chunk maybe although if it's political I don't necessarily going to call that bite size because the political can involve a lot of important things to talk about. I keep looking at the blurb as if I'm actually going to read it to you and then just keep talking about other things. Okay, so there's a young royal who is basically her family or her brothers are dead. Her armies and their war mammoths have been defeated and caged behind their borders and she's got to choose some allies. And then we've got Rabbit who is a handmaiden who befriends the emperor's lonely wife and gets more than she bargained for. And then it seems to follow an empress who is a northern's daughter in a mage made summer exile but will she bend history to her will and bring her enemies piece by piece i'm not sure how they're threading together yet but i am intrigued and i'm excited to read this i've seen a lot of good things about this and hopefully this is one that i can pick up easily before 12 tomorrow depends what time i wake up i need to do my cleaning today of the house 
so of the flat so that hopefully I can actually get to these tomorrow but I don't know what's the font size oh oh the font's quite close together okay don't know how quickly I'm gonna get through this one but I will give it my darndest so that's the plan everyone I will be ending this vlog today as I said but you will get another vlog I guess on Monday from over the weekend because yeah I just thought that would be fun I think I've said that about five million times in this vlog so so woo I yeah I, I will update you later she says maybe what time is it it's 12 30 what I only just like did this to myself not that this is much of an achievement but I've been working from bed this morning which is what Fridays are for for me um so yeah wow okay all right happy Friday <laughs> Wow, I definitely look like I've done a yoga workout, which I have, but I just wanted to show you my dinner really awkwardly. Ah, uh, there it is. It's a green bean salad with steak, and I am so excited for it because, oh, that's really messy. We don't need to look over there. That's where I just did my cooking. I'm so excited for it because I have never cooked myself steak before. I love steak, I've never cooked it before. I'm so getting more and more into cooking meats. Because I've got contamination OCD and like a phobia of throwing up, I don't, I'm not like a big fan of cooking certain meats, but steak is okay because obviously you can eat it much rarer. And I felt confident enough to do it tonight. I'm so excited. So this is a Joe, Wick, Joe Wicks recipe. So if you want it, Google that steak and green bean things. It was, I used fillet steak, it was meant to be gammon, but I like fillet steak. So I'm gonna eat this whilst I watch Captain America. The, no, it's not called that anymore. <laughs> the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. No, I'm not. I'm gonna eat this then, I'm gonna watch that because I've seen people say it's emotional and I don't wanna be crying whilst I'm eating my food because that just ruins food, so. Great. Anyway, I'll give you reading updates later because I wanna eat. Okay, dinner has been consumed. I am now sat at my desk because I've just scheduled my video to go live tomorrow, which is all about how to monetize your social media accounts and your YouTube and your blog basically make money off of your content. So hopefully that's a video that you guys enjoy. But I'm coming to wrap up the vlog because honestly I look like I have had a week and I haven't, I've had a normal week. It's been quite a decent week, but I wanna take my makeup off and I wanna go watch The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And I just feel like I need to own up to the fact that I'm so sorry that this vlog has literally contained the only book I've read being DNF'd. However, I did also, I've been listening to an audiobook and I've not gone le long left in it. I've been listening to this for ages because I just haven't been listening to audiobooks as much at the moment. I find if I'm like doing things during the day at the moment I tend to have music on because I just feel it gives me such a pick-me-up and makes me feel great. So the audiobook that I've been listening to very slowly is called Disfigured and it basically looks at how fairy tales involve disability and how disability seems to be usually represented by the villains in fairy tales and also the idea of like body image and well not body image as such but like it gives Shrek as an example with Fiona and how she only kind of accepts who she is when someone else is the same as her and she finds that love with Shrek and she's okay to be an ogre then because he's also an ogre whereas if she was going to be an ogre on her own would she have been as happy like it looks at that kind of thing and like the representation of being okay with who you are but also like how disability is reflected and how people will see disability as a younger disabled person growing up and as someone as an adult seeing it as well and I find it really interesting because I've got scoliosis which is something that can be perceived as something like the Hunchback of Notre Dame in which there is a hunchback and they are ostracized because of it pretty much I've not seen that film for a very very long time very long time but I yeah my scoliosis means that my shoulders are wonky at the well you, I tr always try and say a different way for people to be able to notice it but I subconsciously lower them um but I'm hunched over at the moment so you can't see anyway but I also have a hump in my back which is because my spine is curved and pushed up and it pushes the muscles as well so there's generally a bump in my back it's nothing too extreme and I'm very thankful that it isn't but also it's it got worse and I was told it wouldn't get worse so I don't know what it's gonna be like the older I get but I feel like reading this book I thought actually that's really interesting that's something I haven't thought about because I was diagnosed when I was 18 and since then, yeah, it's gradually got worse, but this book is totally opening my eyes to how disability is represented and seeing all the different types of fairy tales and how they look at this and how like, it's always righted in some way. If there's some kind of disability, it's always like some magic to write it. Like it isn't okay to live your life with something that would be a disability to you or you're ostracized, like The Lion King with Scar. The fact that he's even called Scar as well, like, he's ostracized because he's different for that reason and is the villain 
and it's just it's really interesting I talk for ages about it it's a really really interesting book and I would highly advise it if you want to learn more about that kind of thing just have your eyes open to it a bit because yeah it's taught me things that I hadn't thought about before so it's really interesting so I'm listening to that I've got about an hour and a half left it's really good other than that though thank you for sticking with the vlog there will be another vlog for the bookopolathon on Monday I think I, I don't want to swear myself to that but roughly around that time but I hope you did enjoy this one. If you did, again, I'm sorry that it didn't include much reading, but hopefully you enjoyed some fun conversations. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, comment anything down below. <laughs> um, what was the last book you DNF'd? Let me know that. And subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. If you'd like to check out any of my socials and anything, they're all down below, as well as a link to my Patreon, where I have got new reduced prices with new features, and it's all very exciting, and the family is growing, and I love it very much. So yeah, that's all down below. I'm gonna go take all this off and watch The Falcon and the Winter Soldier and maybe cry. I don't know, but thank you guys so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.